What's up, YouTube Latino nerd over here? Uh, so I'm a little sick, so <coughs> bear with me. Uh, last night we experienced the most horrific, uh, straight out embarrassing performance by the New York Jets. It was so bad that Fitzpatrick threw a league a high 11 interception, got benched. And Geno Smith came in, and he also threw an interception in his only drive. So now we now, now there's a dilemma. The Jets are one and five. They their only win came against Buffalo on the first Thursday night football game outside of the uh, season opener, uh, which was uh, Broncos Panthers rematch Super Bowl rematch. <clears throat> so the Jets one and five, not making the playoffs. There's there's no way they're going. N <clears throat> Nine and one, eleven and zero. Oh, there, there's no way. Or ten and yeah, yeah. Whatever. You get. It. There's no way they're going on a winning streak. So uh, there's been talk about Fitzpatrick being benched for the rest of the season, and Geno Smith coming in. To that I say, one game. <laughs> one game. Uh, I give him the Ravens game. That's if if I was a general manager, if I was like McCagnan. If I was Todd Bowles, if I was Shane Gailey, I'd give him one game, Geno Smith. Give him the game against the Ravens. If he doesn't play above average against that Ravens defense, then he's done. Because Fitzpatrick and Geno Smith are on their last year of contract. So Fitzpatrick already showed you why we shouldn't resign him. I didn't want the Jets to resign Fitzpatrick because I remember when he got signed by Buffalo in that five year deal and how much that came to bite Buffalo in the rear end. So now the Jets only gave him one year deal, and it's funny how Fitzpatrick wanted a, a, a multi year contract extension after his last year. We all know who you are, Fitzpatrick. You're not you're not in your third or fourth year, all right. You didn't have you didn't break these records going in 26, 27. You're you're in your eleventh year, all right. I mean, come on, Fitzpatrick. You, you you know you knew this. Don't try to dupe us. And now the Jets. Uh, they say he's his starter, but I think if it's if it's Patrick stinks the joint up against uh, the Ravens, they're gonna bench him right then and there. But I don't want that. He already showed enough in, against the Arizona Cardinals, who, mind you, had to move Tyron Matthew to the nickel cornerback position because they have no corners. That's how Patrick Peterson they have no corners. So this was the perfect opportunity to have uh, Quincy Nunwa. Uh, Roby Anderson, all these guys step up because the, the the Cardinals have no 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 they have no cornerbacks outside of Tyron uh, not not Tyron Matthew um Patrick Peterson. Tyron Matthew is a free he's a safety he's a safety and they move him to nickel only because he played nickel at LSU but he's a safety. So here we go. I say give Geno Smith the one start against the Ravens. Uh, if he, he, he if he throws an interception, then that's it, because this Geno Smith and Fitzpatrick already ruined all their chances that they had. All of them are gone. Geno Smith just has one chance because he's the youngest. He's the youngest with experience on the roster. So Fitzpatrick is gone after this year. Geno Smith has one to two games max to prove himself, but the Jets aren't going to bring him back anyway. My thing is, you're one in five. Give Geno Smith the one start, and then after Geno Smith stinks up the joint and doesn't or plays below average or average, put Bryce Petty in. Just just put something like Geno Smith did not play to our expectations. We're gonna bench him in favor of Bryce Petty. And I know Bryce Petty had the shoulder soreness, but I think he's ready to play. It's been six weeks, and he I think he injured that shoulder week four so of the preseason. So it's been six weeks. I think his shoulder is fine. All right, put Bryce Petty in, make him active, make him active, make Bryce Petty active for the third, for this game against the Baltimore Ravens. Make him the third string quarterback, if not second, because you know, and I, because me personally, I would bench Fitzpatrick, uh, start Geno Smith Ravens, have Bryce Petty as his backup. All right. The Jets, I feel, are going to have Fitzpatrick start against the Ravens. Geno Smith is the backup, but I want them to start to have 
Bryce Petty's the third string. Because I I know in my world, uh, my perfect little world that makes sense, Bryce Petty would start uh, two weeks from now after Geno Smith, would go, would go in after Geno Smith gets pulled from the Ravens game. But in the Jets world, in real life, they're going to start Fitzpatrick, have Geno Smith as a backup. But I want them to just insert Bryce Petty as a third string. And then if Bryce Petty starts to stink up to join, I, I give him three weeks. So right now you're looking at the Jets either being 1-6 or 2-5 and five after a Ravens game. Give Bryce Petty the next start, so you'll be F after the Ravens. So you're looking at either 1-7 or 2-6. Maybe 3-5, and five, who knows. But after that, you should, if Bryce Petty starts to... So if Fitzpatrick failed... If Geno Smith failed, and if uh, Bryce Petty doesn't uh, look up to play up to expectations where we want him, because he's a, he is a fourth round pick, and there's a fourth round pick in Dallas who's lighting up the joint and got the Cowboys number one in the NFC East and possibly a top two seed in the NFC playoffs with a first round bye. All right, so start Bryce Petty. If Bryce Petty starts to play bad or if his shoulder seems to bother him a lot, start start Hackenberg. I know I'm not a fan of Hackenberg. That was a wasted second round pick, but at least play him. So all four quarterbacks are going to play this year, is what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Jets should do. They need all four quarterbacks need to play because the season's gone. The season's gone. You wasted a year of Brandon Marshall's career. You wasted another year of Darrell Dar Revis' year. Matt Forte came in for no reason whatsoever, other than to show us that he's on the wrong side of thirty. The offensive line is is in need of a of a makeup now that uh, Nick Mangold's getting old. Ryan Clady isn't the same left tackle that we once thought he was. The guard position is just atrocious. James Carpenter is probably the only light spot, and he's barely a light spot. The right tackle position is questionable at best. Bruno Giacomini, I don't care if he's healthy or not healthy, he's not the best option for right for the right tackle position. So now you're looking at a dilemma where the Jets need to have the four quarterbacks play this year, figure out which players are staying and going, because the season's gone. At 1-5, in five, you're not making the playoffs. 1-4, in four, you had a slight chance, very small chance, if you won that game against the Cardinals on Monday Night Football, but they lost. They got embarrassed. They got shoved out the building. So it's embarrassing for the Jets, yes. But figure out who your future quarterback is. Figure out who you can start next year. Because Fitzpatrick's going to get cut. Geno Smith's going to get cut. So it's between Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg. And I highly, highly believe that they're going to bring in a veteran quarterback. Maybe Tavares Jackson. Maybe uh, a Brian Hoyer after he's he's been playing well in Chicago. Although I think Chicago's going to retain him because they don't want Jay Cutler. So bring in a veteran quarterback to back up, to teach, uh, give the Mark Brunel experience to these uh, young quarterbacks. But it's between Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg. There's no reason they should re-sign Geno Smith. There's no reason they should re-sign Fitzpatrick because both these players, both these quarterbacks are playing atrociously for these New York Jets. And if the New York Jets want to get to the playoffs, want to be Super Bowl contenders like they were in 2009, 2010, they need to do something fast. And it's days like this where I really miss the days where Mark Sanchez was the guy. Because no matter what, and I know the butt fumble and everything, uh, he's he was horrible. But no matter what, he was the guy. It wasn't. Oh, what's? It was always what? What is wrong with Mark Sanchez? Or what? What is wrong with the receivers? The offensive line? What, what's going on? There's no running back. And I'll, I'll do a whole separate video on the Mark Sanchez thing later, but. No, look. Take a good look at Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg. Because we're now, now it's week six. It's after week six. You have a good ten weeks left. Ten more games. You have your bye week as well. Look, look at your young quarterbacks. Forget Fitzpatrick. Forget, give Geno one to two games max, and give Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg a chance to prove themselves with the receivers like Chris, uh, Brandon Marshall and Quincy Nunu and, and all them boys. 
but I'm the Latino nerd. I'm going to go take some medicine so I can start to feel better. Uh, sorry I haven't been on the live streams, but once I, uh, I get rid of this cough and this sore throat, I will get back on the live stream. So, I'm the Latino nerd. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you soon.